Hi, so I'm here with one member of Pulled Apart by Horses. Just the one. Just the one. Still very <laughs> exciting anyway. So you've been on tour. You've done a few dates already. I've heard Pla uh, Blackpool was a pretty mad one. How's it been so far? Yeah, actually, Blackpool was a really mad one. We've yeah. never played Blackpool before. So when we got there, we were like, we, you don't know what to expect. Yeah, a bit of an unusual one. But it was a Saturday night. Mental in Blackpool. So a Saturday night on Blackpool, whether it's a gig anyway. I've been to Blackpool before on a night out and spent most of the night hiding. But yeah, we got down there and we were like, oh, we don't know what this is going to be like. And then people turned up and started drinking. And then we were told we, were ha we had to go on late. Yeah. And it got to half ten. And as you can imagine... Bedlam. Yeah, yeah. bedlam. Yeah, annihilation is probably the right word. Yeah. It was pretty hectic, pretty hairy. Yeah. yeah. Sweaty, boozy, messy. Yeah. Yeah, a mess was made. I heard the sound system was pretty interesting as well. The setup was quite quirky. They had like this, the stage was quite small, but the PA was like four times as big as the stage. Yeah, it was monster. It was an absolute Goliath. <laughs> it was ridiculous. It was like, yeah, you know, when you're like at a show and it, you're, you're, you're shaking, yeah. like your lungs are shaking. I was like that. Going, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty, it was really good Blackpool actually, yeah. yeah. So you've been playing shows for over a decade now. Mm. Um, well, I know when you first start playing shows, it's really exciting and it's a really great experience. Is that something that's kind of maintained itself throughout your career? Because it's been a long time. Yeah, big time, because I think what happens is you do, you go on the road for like a year or a year and a half and then you have like a bit of downtime and in that downtime, that's when you realise you love doing it and you can't stop doing it. Yeah. So it does get like tiring, but then, and it's, still, it's always still exciting but you get tired, and the more you get tired, yeah. it's not that you don't want to do it, it just becomes a little bit hard, like you're a little bit like, oh God. But then once you're up there, you're like, ah. Yeah. But yeah, you do get tired, and then the second you stop doing it, you're like, why am I not doing this? I need to do this ASAP. Yeah, so you really start to miss it. Yeah, big time, like this tour, we've not, we haven't done a tour for two years, I think. Yeah, since the haze? Yeah, since the yeah, haze, it's been yeah. Time, yeah. It's been about two years, and then, this came along. We had like a, we've got like an album's worth of new material, like written, and we were like, instead of just going in the studio and recording it, why don't we tour it and go and play loads of small venues and yeah. like pack them out and play new stuff yeah. and see if people like it or not. Yeah, and it test the waters a little bit. Exactly, yeah, and like it gave us a chance. It's what it's given us a chance to change the songs as well and play them yeah, differently. Like so like every show, like we're playing them a little bit different and faster or changing things and. By the end of it, we'll have an album, and then we'll go and record it, and yeah. hopefully it'll be amazing. Fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah. fingers crossed. It'll be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> this is your first tour as well without Tom on guitar. Yeah. Yeah. So what's that about? What's that been like? Is it kind of a change that you've made consciously, or did it just kind of come naturally? It was, yeah, kind of consciously made. I think it was. It's it's the the angle, the kind of route we're taking with this like record is like. We're going down that sort of like Stooges, Iggy Pop kind of uh, rock yeah, and roll yeah. kind of vibe. And I think it gives Tom, especially live, a lot more space and opportunity to, you know, do whatever he wants. Yeah, definitely. And you restrict it with the guitar. Like, you, you can't, you can only do so much as a, when you're yeah. performing and stuff. And like, and now, first few shows, he was like, right, yeah, okay, I haven't got a guitar. And then a few more shows later, we were like, where's Tom? We don't know where he's <laughs> gone. Like, literally, where is he? And it's like, up in the rafters, way. He's up like, there, oh, hello, up, like, yeah. <laughs> It's like, literally like that. Like, last night in Edinburgh, I was like, I have no idea where he is. I can hear him, but I don't <laughs> know where he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think he was on, I think it was behind the bar or something, serving drinks or something. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. I literally don't know. So do you think he's really kind of come into his own there and it's kind of benefited the band in that way? Oh, yeah, yeah, like massively. I think it'll, that's why this tour was so important because it's kind of, kinda sh it's, it's kind of going to shape what's next and yeah, stuff. What's to come. And like figuring out the guitar stuff for me live as well is like losing the guitar means we have to add more sound wise. Yeah. So I've got like a new setup. So it's a bit bigger sounding and I can do a bit more and make it sound like there's two guitars and stuff. Uh -huh. Okay, so that's yeah. a massive thing because if we'd have just gone, let's just get rid of Tom's guitar and then I go out and just do what I was doing, it would be missing something when we play the old stuff. Yeah. So I've got a bit of a nerdy bit setup. Of a techie pedal yeah, big it's sky, a bit techie. Kinda, yeah. I still don't quite understand it. <laughs> yeah. But it, it seems to be doing the job though. It always looks far more confusing than it actually is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, it is really confusing. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. I was up 
like the, the stuff, like the pedal switch and all this stuff arrived the night before the tour. It was supposed to arrive like a couple of weeks before, yeah. but it arrived the day before we went on tour. And I was like at the studio, I was literally crying. I was like, I don't know how this works. I don't yeah, and we've got to go and I've got to, we've got to leave at like eight a.m. tomorrow, and I don't. I'm yeah. really, this isn't going to happen. But I persevered and stayed up to three in the morning. Big overnight session. Yeah, I had a big how overnight session. How to use my session. own pedal board. I had a big overnight session of crying and drinking, <laughs> and trying to figure out how this fucking pedal board Putting works. Putting all of them on. Yeah, big, it was the, big sky. All of them. Yeah, it was yeah. like all of them. It was like none of them are working, but I'm. <laughs> yeah, it was a nightmare, but it works now. So yeah, so that's yeah. always great. Yeah. So in terms of the band, you've had a lot of massive achievements over the kind of ten years that you've been touring and doing stuff. Mm. Some including touring with you know the likes of Biffy and Muse, mm. but also in terms of having a top twenty album as yeah, well, which yeah. was massive. Mm. Um, and you recorded with Jill. Oh, Gil Norton, yeah yeah, 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 which is really, really impressive. Obviously, yeah. recording for Pixies. Yeah. But for you, have there been any moments in your career so far that mm. have really stuck out to you and that you always look back on? Probably the first time we did Leeds and Reading because yeah. it was well Leeds Festival mainly because at Leeds Festival well I used to go to Leeds Festival back when I was a kid and I've been that was my main festival I just went every year yeah. and I never thought when I was there that I'd be one day like on the other side of the barrier or whatever I just yeah. was like mm, across nah. the other side of the fence yeah, yeah. The other side of the fence I was like that that's not gonna, that's not gonna happen I'm not gonna end up doing that but then the f and then the first time. We did it. We did the like introducing stage, which is like the smaller like competition stage, and yeah. Radio One uh, stage, um, and then we did the main stage in. I should know this. Two thousand and I think it was eleven or twelve. That, that sounds started. about right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'll just yeah, I'll never forget that because yeah. that was like, holy shit! I just remember going out and going, oh my god. This, this is, is where I always yeah. dreamt to be. It was like a yeah. little tear, and I was like, don't cry. <laughs> I was like, wow, but yeah, that that for me, like doing doing the main stage at Lee's was like, just one of those things. It was just like, never thought in a million years yeah. it, it'd end up doing that. Especially yeah. just from being a punter, going every year and like loving yeah. it. I was just like, nah, I'm not going up there, <laughs> not a chance. But I think that's probably every like starting out in like Leeds as well that's every kind of Leeds band's dream yeah because it uh, it's yeah. such a massive deal I think Reading yeah. and Leeds and so many people come down to see some great bands at BBC introducing yeah yeah big time I think it's one of those things as well where um, it's it, it's so eclectic the lineup it's changed over the years like you, when I used to go it was quite kind of like it was quite like rock and metal yeah. really essentially and then as it grew I was kind of like as it kind of became more eclectic, I was like, we probably won't get booked for this. It's really indie now, yeah, isn't it, a lot yeah, of the time? Yeah, yeah, and I was like, I think we've missed the boat here. And then for some reason, I don't know why, they just kept asking us back. We ended up doing it like, I think we, we've done it s seven times. That's impressive. Yeah, it was like we became yeah. the house band. It was like, we need to have a break <laughs> from Leeds <laughs> Festival. One we year off, to, please. Yeah, we yeah. need a couple of years off and then maybe come back and do it next year or something. But... Yeah, that was like a really big one for me. In Glastonbury yeah. as well. Always massive, yeah. Yeah, that was that was pretty pretty insane. But it was quite hard work. Yeah, I've heard that about Glastonbury. Yeah, like it's it's like uh, human traffic, like all the production routes <laughs> yeah. are just com constantly busy. It's like it's a it's a it's yeah. a town, isn't it? Yeah. It becomes a, a, a town appears, a big town as well. Like it, yeah, that was that was that was crazy to do that. But that was kind of like we went in and did it, and then we were like, I think we need to leave. Yeah, I think it's time to like, go now. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> should probably go. But um, yeah, that was amazing as well. Glastonbury and, and, and Leeds. Leeds and Reading, yeah, yeah big time. Yeah. So you've also had a bit of a lineup change over the past four years. Yeah. Um, in terms of that kind of change, and I know when you've been a band for a long time, it can be quite monumental. Yeah. What was that like for you? What, when the, the lineup changed? Yeah. It was it was kind of weird because we've been going for so long with Lee drumming and he was like a writer as well. We all write, we all like write as much as each other person. And then when he um, left, we kind of knew it was going to happen because he had a little kid. Yeah. And and uh, yeah, little Rosie popped out his his little daughter, and we were like, wow, this is amazing. He's got a little barb and stuff. And then the third record came out, and we were touring. That's when it went like in the charts and stuff, and just got pretty heavy duty. We were it like going, ar does, going yeah. around like Europe and doing arena tours, and it was just like, wow, you're not going to be at home very much. And like, it, didn't, it wasn't like a bad, 
we knew we could see it was going to happen and like it was very it was all we you know we love each other we still love him and stuff and I went to his birthday party in London yeah like we were all still yeah. was friend just the same friends as we were but it was sad it was really sad it was like well, it's been a long, long time at that mm. point as well. Yeah, and he was like one of the, f well, he is one of the founding members of the band yeah. and stuff. So it was quite hard and, and sad, but um, it's something he had to do. It wasn't yeah. like we hadn't fallen out or anything. It was like, I've had a kid, I need to slow things down. Yeah. You know, fair enough. Like, we support you. Yeah. Musically, has it been any different then? Because if he had such a big part in the writing process, have things kind of shifted slightly? It, well, it hasn't, it hasn't, because. I think if you're a band, if you're a band where you have one sole individual writer, and some of the other members leave, and it's he doesn't leave, it's not going to change, is it? Because there's just that one songwriter. When there's four people writing, if you take one person out of that, you've still got the other three that have always, you know, been writing in the band and stuff. So when Tommy came in to the band, it kind of just gelled into it straight away because it wasn't just one person telling each other person what to do in the band he like came in and joined the gang yeah. essentially um, so his style is a little bit different but once we start playing together you know with me Rob and Tom it just kind of becomes pulled apart by horses so it yeah, it's all kind of gelled together yeah yeah basically it hasn't like drastically drastically changed or anything it's still the same same band but if anything this next record's gonna be a little bit different with Tom getting rid of the guitar and then us going down a bit more of a sort of like Stooges rock and roll punk yeah. style kind of thing which is what we were edging towards on the last record but we're definitely going down that route on this one um, to keep us all interested and stuff yeah. so yeah you know it hasn't really changed um, but yeah he yeah as soon as Tommy joined the gang that's it it's like yeah. right we're, we're all together all so together yeah, yeah 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 big time Awesome. So we've spoken a little bit about the new record that potentially this is like testing the grounds for testing the waters. Yeah. Uh, what can we expect from that? So you've spoken a little bit about the punk influences. Can you give us any more about that? <coughs> it's pretty, um, because we've been playing it for the past two weeks. Like I'm starting to understand, I'm only just starting to understand, well we're all only just trying, starting to understand it now, but it's quite straight up. It is quite like direct. Yeah. Um, it's not, I'd say it's not uh, as riff based as it once was. It's more like a, a kind of like tight unit thing where it's just like in your face and stark and quite harsh yeah. with Tom sort of kind of leading it vocally and performance wise. And it's like, it's kind of, I, I feel like it's a bit of a, a hard brick wall of sound at the moment. And then you've got Tom sat on top of that wall, <laughs> like kind of dangling his legs, like yeah. or trying to kick it down. It's it's yeah, it's it's. I, I think he's going along more down the kind of punk, the punk route at the minute. Um, and I think that's got a lot to do with um, certain bands we've been listening to recently. Yeah. Iggy Pop's probably the big one. Yeah, um, the Stooges. Stooges. Massive, yeah. yeah. Performance-wise. Yeah. Well, there's like we've found taken so much influence in in Iggy recently, like, and in his new stuff as well. But that's something that's got such charm. I mean, I don't think we'd ever be able to write Raw Power or anything like that, but it's like, it's got so much charm that we were like, we want to kind of do that. Like, it's really cool and like, it's straight up as well. Like, it's not too, there, there, are, there, were, there were points in writing and stuff where things, especially on the second record and, and Blood, where we were kind of over, overcomplicating things a little yeah. bit. Which is fine, but this is a bit more like fucking have it, like yeah, yeah like a bit more search and destroy. Yeah, yeah, totally, it's yeah. totally that kind of yeah. thing, and it's great that because it 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 gives us a bit more, it gives us a new lease of life and stuff, and hopefully like the old fans or the fans or whatever will be like, oh fucking, this is quite good on you, yeah. like yeah. so it's been going really well so far. Like we're playing so many new songs in the set. I think we were doing like four or five old ones. The first gig, we were like, let's do loads. And and then if they're like bored and it doesn't work out, we'll just put some more old ones in. And the first two or three shows, we were like, oh, everyone's actually quite into this because it's a bit different and it's straight up. 
So we've just kept them all in. Like seemed, every night, it's been like people are just getting into it. I think it's got a lot to do with Tom as well. They're seeing Tom for the first time, like yeah, legging it around with the mic, and it's like, what is this guy doing? It's really, it's cool. It's really exciting. Yeah, it's really exciting. It's a new lease of life for, for us, really, and for Tom. He's going to end up in a wheelchair though by <laughs> the end of this tour. Literally, he'll be like in a cast, all his legs and arms. Yeah, he's going to get damaged big time. Damage good. Yeah, he be, will be. I think he already is damaged goods, actually. Branded, but this is like actual damage yeah, yeah, goods yeah, yeah, by yeah. the end of yeah, it. Yeah, totally, totally, yeah. Yeah, if he's not in, the end, in a wheelchair by the end of this tour, I'm going to be really disappointed in him. Yeah, you haven't tried hard enough yeah, yeah, if not. Yeah, yeah, we need to go back out, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much for sitting down and talking to me. We're in Sheffield tonight, which I think will be really good for you guys. It's a little bit closer to home than Edinburgh. This is, yeah, yeah. This, this is, I guess this is our. Uh, this is our local uh, hometown, well, it's not our hometown show, but it's the closest one to Leeds because we've left Leeds out and, and Rob's from Sheffield, our bassist. And um, yeah, it's sold out this morning. So yeah, it's, it's, like a, it's like a hometown show really this one because we're not doing Leeds. So I'm pretty, I'm really fucking excited about this one. Actually. <laughs> it's yeah, be so am I. I've never yeah. seen you guys before, so I'm really oh, looking amazing. forward to it. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, I'll apologise now then in that case. Yeah, You've never seen it. in advance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be amazing tonight. It should be yeah, good one. Definitely. Yeah. All your local fans have come swanning in. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, it would seem that way. It's just yeah. family. It's just loads of family. <laughs> just all family and yeah, friends. Family, family, family and acquaintances. <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. Amazing. But thank you very much for sitting down with uh, me. Yeah, so this has been Pulled Apart by Horses, kind of. One member, James. <laughs> Pulled Apart by Horses. <laughs> yeah, Pulled Apart by a horse <laughs> is what we've had. Well, thank you anyway. I'm sure it'll go very well tonight. A bit of a homecoming for you. Amazing. Thanks awesome. For me, yeah. No worries. Thank you.